On today's episode of The Most Expensive Thing Isn't Always the Best, we are gonna take this, the fastest server money can buy. It's got 128 processing cores, a terabyte of RAM. It's got storage that can copy files at 100 gigabytes a second. And we're gonna put a graphics card in it and play video games. Come along for a grand old time. And a grand old segue to our sponsor, Origin PC. Origin PC desktops can now be customized with NVIDIA GeForce RTX 30 series graphics cards. So if you're in the market for a new PC powered by RTX 30 series and backed by 24-7 support team, check out Origin PC systems at the link below. We'll begin by meeting the RTX 3090 graphics card that we will be installing in our server. And I use the word in kind of loosely here. This is the Supreme X from MSI and I actually get it. That's a funny one, MSI. It's like Supreme because you can't make enough of them and the prices get jacked up on eBay. This thing has an absolutely massive triple slot cooler three eight pin power connectors, three fans, and of course everything else that you would expect from an RTX 3090 graphics card. It's got a full metal backplate, PCI Express Gen 4 16X connector down here, and enough RGB to choke a horse. Why anyone wants to choke a horse though? I've never been able to quite figure out. Here's the thing. It's not as though a server like this isn't designed to have GPUs installed in it. It totally is. There's a riser right here. So the slot comes out at an angle. You can actually see we're using PCI Express 16X slots. In fact, they're gen four as well for our storage drives, which are installed here, 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 and here. The issue is that server GPUs come in pretty standardized form factors. And a lot of the time they don't even have display outputs and, or fans on them. So they're designed to sit here and utilize the airflow that's already going through the chassis for their own cooling. Dell in their infinite wisdom also requires you to buy a special GPU adapter kit that comes with their proprietary cable. So you can plug in your GPU and a bracket. So, we are gonna have to get a little more creative than that. I mean, how ironic is that? Dell has a proprietary 12 pin connector so that I can go to dual eight pin and then back to a 12 pin if I put a factor station. <laughs> Fortunately, we have a plan. Since we don't actually need to install this in a rack unit anyway, we can just take a PCI Express extension, jam it in there, and run the graphics card wherever we please. I could even put it on top of the monitor if I really wanted to. It's not really that crazy if you think about it. I mean, the traces inside your motherboard are basically just, you know, strands of copper. So all we're doing with an extension like this is extending the copper strands some more. Now, we might run into trouble with PCI Express Gen 4 signaling since getting the timing right on that is a bit more complicated. But we already know that running an RTX 3090, even on a Gen 3 slot, which we can manually change it to if we need to, is only gonna cost us a couple percent performance. So this seems like a reasonable compromise. Before we can fire it up though, there's a little trick here. We're just gonna put a little wire into the green and black pins on our ATX 12 pin connector before turning our power supply on, plugging in the server. Here we go. You can really hear the performance. Look at this RGB. It goes perfectly with our server. All right, Arnold. It's a good thing we set the fans to the quiet profile. It's just loud because it has intrusion detection. So if the top panel's off, oh. it spins up. I don't know what we can do about that. Where's the intrusion it's detection? At the, at the back, but I think it's electrical too. So. Even if you push it down, it needs to also be grounded. Hold on, I got this. Oh, oh my God. Do not unplug that power supply. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. They call me the PC surgeon. That's some open heart surgery right there. Okay, so what I'm hoping is that we can trip the chassis intrusion detection thing 
so that we don't have to listen to this noise quite so loud. Yeah, there might not be any getting around it. No, I'll just deal with the noise. It's easier for this to get dragged off the table if the cables are hanging up. Okay, I just need to keep those clear of the fans. You need fans for good cooling. Hey Andy, make sure you get this. By the time this video comes out, that thing might finally be on LTTstore.com. Wait, LTTstore.com? That's where you get this? Oh yeah! LTT Store! This game will unlock in approximately less than an hour. There we go, all right. So we might actually get to play this. In the meantime, for anyone who didn't catch it in our first video about this, that's Task Manager. Mmm, mmm, double flex. The reason there's so many drives in this thing is because this machine is actually going to end up being our main video editing storage server. So those are all gonna be put together in some kind of Linux RAID or multi-disc or something like that. But we're focused on the GPU. RTX 3090, baby. Also, there's a terabyte of RAM in here, which, how are you using 148 gigs? Do you still have a RAM disk installed? Yeah. That makes sense. Um, we're not gonna end up using that for gaming, though. We had intended to, like, install all our games in RAM. But what we realized is that every RAM disk software we tried, and there's like half a dozen of them on here, was limited by the software itself not by the speed of the memory. So our honey badgers, even though we've only got, I think two of them, like windows rated together, it's actually faster than a RAM disc. Before we game, we've got some unfinished business though. Blender wouldn't run, because we didn't have a graphics card last time. So it's time for a Blender CPU rendering flex. Now, even auto tile size defaulted to 64 threads, and I keyed in 256, but I have a feeling that is not going to work, especially because we've got two CPU sockets and I don't believe Blender is NUMA aware, so it might be limited to just one. But here we go, BMW. Oh, no. <laughs> it's utilizing it about 69%, not too shabba labby, 48 seconds. Classroom is something I expect to be like a five to 15 minute test. This is gonna do it in it's tracking about two minutes and 35 seconds. Of course, because we're not benefiting from multiple CPUs, we'd be better off with a Threadripper. Now, normally I would be impressed that we're getting just shy of 200 frames per second, 4K ultra nightmare details, Doom Eternal. Except that when you've got a $60,000 machine, you might expect more bang for your buck. Now, the situation has changed a lot over the last few years in particular but video games are still relatively lightly threaded compared to other applications like 3D animation or uh, video editing even, video encoding in particular. So what happens is if you've got a CPU like this that is all about width rather than per core performance, well, you can pop into your task manager and see what's happening here. Our GPU is running at like now that's not quite representative of the real situation, but it thinks it's running at like 10% capacity. Now based on the heat coming off of this, it's definitely working reasonably hard, but the fans are also barely spinning. That's crazy town. We're using 40% CPU, downloading a cyberpunk update. Okay, that's some, that's some heavy compression. This is one good looking freaking game, particularly with ray tracing on. Is that not unreal? It's not, get it? This is at 4K with RTX on. We're using DLSS, but we've manually selected the quality setting. So that's why we're only getting 43 FPS right now. Of course, the question that we have right now is how well our poor at best, three gigahertz processor is keeping up with our GPU. Let's go have a look, shall we? Wow, we are entirely GPU bound right now. We are up to 75 degrees and at 96, 97% usage. Oh yeah, GPU power usage is anywhere from 94 to 100%. Absolutely cranked. So as long as you're playing Cyberpunk at 4K absolutely maxed, your 3090 is gonna be the bottleneck. For anyone who was wondering, that's how many cores Cyberpunk can hit, assuming it has all the cores in the world to work with. So we're sitting at like 17, 18% usage. Man, this game is the new crisis. Like, 
nothing is able to run this absolutely maxed out. Remember, we're using DLSS. We're only rendering at 1440p, and then it's upscaling to 4K. With that said, from my experience with it earlier today, DLSS quality on this looks really good. That is to say, the DLSS quality preset, not the quality of DLSS. Look at this fire, Jake! Look at these shadows. Look at these shadows of the people walking around on the street. There's no, like, stair-stepping. There's no, like, judder, because they're only refreshing every 10th frame. Man, remember how good this game looked when it came out? It was hard to run, too. And it still looks good. But compared to Cyberpunk just now, it's like, ah, no. It looks 10 years older. It really does. Like how fake the sun rays look and stuff. Yeah. All right, so let's exit to menu, and then we're gonna see if our load times don't suck, because we have 128 cores. I don't know. We've loaded it up once just to make sure it's not cloud syncing a profile or anything, but this is what 25 gigabytes a second in storage and 128 CPU cores gets you for GTA loading times. Let's see if it helps at all. Like if you were to do this on a hard drive, it might actually take like two or three minutes. No, oh, I know, I remember. I used to benchmark this game on hard drives back in the day. Our test rigs had like 128 gig SSDs. Like we couldn't have all the games on SSD. I feel like I'm a grandpa talking to like, you know, the young boys that grew up with solid state, you know? I remember I bought my- That was not bad. <laughs> That's pretty good. That's actually not bad. It's not as good as it like could be. Like realistically, that should have happened a little faster, but it's still pretty good. Yeah, not too shabby. The game, it's like, oh, look, you know, we got, we got fake god rays. And pre-rendered shadows. Yeah, pre-rendered shadows. Oh, nice. I mean, these soft shadows are, they're pretty good for back then, but it's no global illumination. All right, how hard's our poor GPU work in here? Oh boy, GPU one power is, Anywhere from 65% uh, to 92%. So we are a little CPU bottlenecked in some situations. Given it's running at a mere 2.9 gigahertz, that kind of makes sense. If you wondered how many cores verifying your game cache takes, uh, the answer is one. You might think, you know, oh, 200, 290 FPS, that's pretty good. That is terrible. I mean, didn't we hit like 500, 600 FPS on the new Ryzen 5000 chips? Yeah, maybe at 1080p. Mm, okay, that's fair, that's fair. But still, I don't it's, think it scales that differently. No. I mean, right now, to give you guys some idea, the alt tab out, we are now using um, anywhere from 45 to 70% of our GPU, because we are so CPU bottleneck. Only one core was actually doing anything. So, okay. It's not a gaming machine, but the good news is that the things that we will do with this, fast storage, fast networking, actually are heavily dependent on having lots and lots of CPU cores. So stay tuned, because we're gonna have some updates coming around that, just like I've got an update about our sponsor. Squarespace gives you the tools you need to build and grow your online presence. They've got a ton of templates spanning a large variety of categories. So if you need a website for your blog or your wedding or your business, Squarespace has you covered. You can buy a domain quickly through Squarespace if you need one, or you can port over an existing one that you already own. So why wait? Get started with a free 14 day trial. Just head to squarespace.com forward slash LTT and you'll get 10% off your first purchase. If you guys enjoyed this video and you love crazy gaming setups, maybe check out the one where I took four GPUs running in a mosaic and tried to set a performance world record only for it to go horribly, horribly wrong. Were you cut when that fell?